Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be doing another unboxing. Now I have quite a few models that have arrived over the last month or two um, that I haven't got around to unboxing yet and because there's so many what I've decided to do is essentially split this into two parts. We're going to have today my Gemini Jets unboxing and then later on we'll have my NG models unboxing. So all the models in today's unboxing are going to be some of the Gemini Jets models I've ordered over the last month or two. So with that being said we're going to go ahead and take the box off to the side and then we're gonna get out the models one by one. So starting off here, kind of rounding off my Breeze fleet so far, we have the Gemini Jets Breeze Airbus A220-300. Breeze operate three types of aircraft, the E190, the E195, and the A220. Uh, the A220 will be their main aircraft. They have 80 of these on order. They don't have as many of the E190s and the E195, so I'm kind of considering this um, kind of the rounding off of my Breeze collection. I have the E195 to operate those E190 and E195. 95 routes and then of course now we have the A220. So moving this one off to the side we're going to get onto the next models and then next up we have a model I was kind of on the edge about getting but I decided to anyway we have the Gemini Jazz Alaska uh, Skywest Alaska E175. Uh, while the E175 for Alaska rarely well it just doesn't come to the east coast this is basically a west coast aircraft I decided to get this anyway just because I really do like um, Alaska as an airline and I love their livery so I decided to get this to just add into my Alaska collection to fill out the uh, collection a bit. So we have the Alaska E175 here. Then next up following along we have two of the brand new Gemini Jets American Eagle CRJ 700s here. Of course the uh, CRJ 700 for American are pretty vital aircraft into the DC area. They fly into mainly Reagan. I believe some of these are based at Reagan. Uh, so these are going to be very critical to the Reagan updates. And then moving on to the next aircraft. This is one that um, it's part of a collection that I am currently trying to grow. Uh, we have the Logan Air Saab 340. Now I would love to create a model airport of some UK regional airport. Um, however, of course, regional aircraft in general from Gemini Jets and 1 to 400 model brands haven't really been released in enough quantities for me to do that. But we are starting to see some models like this be released. So now we have the Logan Air uh, Saab 340. Now that they have the Logan Air license to brand some of their models as Logan Air aircraft, maybe we could get a Logan Air ERJ 145, which would be really good, and some Logan Air ATRs as well. Uh, we've also had the Air Lingus AT TR just being released as well so hopefully we get a lot more UK regional aircraft like that. But yeah this is really exciting the Logan Air Saab 340. And then finally here for today's unboxing we have a Gemini Max Delaware Air National Guard C-130H. Now I have a pretty expansive C-130 collection however the one type of C-130 I really wanted was a plain grey basic C-130 from the US Air Force which is something I don't have yet in my collection. I have all these different types of liveries. I have the Blue Angel C-130, uh, the US Coast Guard C-130, the Royal Air Force and Royal Netherlands Air Force C-130s in these kind of camo color schemes, but I'm yet to have a plain basic gray C-130 in my collection, and that is what this aircraft is gonna be. And so moving that one off to the side, we can now get started with the first model. And so starting off today, uh, we have the Breeze Airbus A220-300. While I do have an A220 in my collection, I have the Delta A220-100. I'm yet to have the Dash 300 variant of the A220, as uh, so this is going to be a first for my collection. But going ahead and opening up the box now, uh, revealing the model inside here, we have the Breeze Airbus A220-300. So Breeze are a relatively new airline to the US, and um, they were founded back in 2018 and commenced operations in 2021. They started with a fleet of Embraer 190s and 195s. Uh, they currently have 10 of the E190 and they have four with a total of seven E195s on the way. But the aircraft that's really gonna take the airline forward into the future is of course this Airbus A220-300. They currently only have seven or eight of these aircraft in operation, but they have orders for 80 of these aircraft. So this aircraft is gonna be their flagship. This is gonna be the aircraft that really builds them up as an airline. 
But taking a look at this aircraft in detail now, starting off at the front of the aircraft here, we have the nose of the A220 here with the cockpit windows. Uh, we have the forward landing gear here. Now, when Gemini Jets first started releasing the A220, uh, they were releasing them as the Herpa mold of the A220 because at that time, uh, they didn't have one of their own A220 molds. Uh, so uh, some of the early uh, non-rolling landing gear A220s that Gemini Jets released, like my Delta A220-100, uh, that was the Herpa mold of the A220, which I really don't mind. Um, I think the new Gemini Jets mold has a bit of a, a long landing gear here, a long forward landing gear here. I think this is a little bit too long, uh, but there we go. Uh, moving back, we have the L1 door here. We have the breeze titles with the windows going back there. Uh, we have the very dark blue engines of the uh, breeze livery there. And then we have the winglets back here. Back here, you can kind of get a better view of those winglets with the breeze logo on the winglet there. Then moving back, we have uh, breeze.com there. Uh, we have the registration, the US flag and then of course we have that breeze tail uh, with the logo at the back. But yeah overall I think this is a really nice model. Currently breeze have no destinations to the DC area but I am still hopeful as they grow as an airline hopefully they will start service to hopefully all three of the DC airports but we will have to see. Chances are if they do in the future it will be on the A220. So hopefully one day in the future we will see this aircraft in the DC area but for now this is just going to look really good in my collection. And then next along we have the Gemini Jess Alaska E-175. And now, as I say, this primarily sticks to the west coast of the US. It kind of ventures out to the Midwest a bit, but primarily it just sticks to the west coast of the US and never really comes to the east coast. I don't think there is a single flight that serves the Alaska E-175 on the east coast of the US. But as I say, I just kind of got this because I do love Alaska as an airline and um, it's just a pretty cool looking plane. So I decided to get it. And so here we go, we have the SkyWest Alaska E-175. Alaska as a whole have 72 of these E-175s in service. However, of course, they are operated by two separate airlines. How a lot of the regional airlines around the US work is, of course, an airline will actually own the aircraft and they will lease them out to these larger brand airlines like Alaska, Delta, United, American for them to operate. So this particular one is a SkyWest uh, E-175. SkyWest have 42 of these e 175s and then Horizon Air have a further 30. And these E-175s are kind of going on to be the backbone of the Alaska regional fleet with the Q400s now retiring. Uh, the E-175s are going to pick up the grunt of that Q400 work. But taking a look at this aircraft in detail now, starting off at the front, we have the nose of the E-175 with the Alaska titles there. Then just behind that, we have the operator of these E-175s, which is of course uh, SkyWest. We then have the L1 door here with the forward landing gear, uh, the wind moving back on the aircraft the very tiny engines of the E-175 and then moving back we have the winglets here with the uh, the color gradient of the different uh, Alaska colors there with the blue and the greens and moving back we have the registration with the US flag and then we have the tail here with Chester uh, sat on the tail there and of course all these different colors I love the colors on the, the uh, new Alaska color scheme the greens and the blues it just looks really really good but apart from that it looks like a really cool model and I cannot wait to add this into my Alaska collection. And so next up here we have another two aircrafts. Here we have two of the American Eagle CIJ 700s. This is a much needed aircraft for a lot of people. Um, I do have an American Eagle CIJ 700 in my collection but it is very old at this point. I believe it was released back in 2013. So it's very nice to kind of update the fleet with these two brand new American Eagle CIJ 700s. So with that being said, we're just gonna go ahead now and unbox both of these and hopefully they are both in working order. None of these come broken anyway. And here we go, we have two American Eagle CIJ 700s pretty much identical to how they were released back in 2013, which is not a bad thing as the old adage goes, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this is one mold that is definitely not broke, so Gemini Jets, do not fix it. Similar to Alaska, American do not own the CIJ 700s or any of their regional aircraft. Um, American operate 61 of the CIJ 700s that are PSA, and then they have a further 80 which are SkyWest, just the same as that Alaska uh, E-175. Uh, these two here are the SkyWest CIJ 700s, of course sporting the new American Eagle livery. Well, it's not even new at this point, of course. American got their new livery back in 2013. So a nine-year-old livery that's not really new. 
But taking a look at these aircraft in detail now, starting off at the front we have the CLJ nose piece there, looking really, really nice with the landing gear under there, looking really, really nice. I love how small they can get that. It just looks really, really good. We have the cockpit window there, the L1 door, the American Eagle titles, and the windows, the wings, the engines, the T-tail. There's not really a bunch to say about this model. Um, but yeah, they both look really, really good. And so with that, honestly, we can now move on to the next model. And so here we go, we have the Logan Air Saab 340. Now this is an aircraft I was looking forward to until I saw the photos of this aircraft and then I was a little bit disappointed, but we will get to that disappointment in just a second. Now Logan Air are probably one of, if not the largest regional airline inside the UK. And um, they are Scotland's national airline, so they uh, primarily operate flights around Scotland and from Scotland down to England. But they also have some into England domestic flights, which doesn't really make sense, but there we go. They have a pretty diverse fleet of aircraft. Now their main aircraft that I think is kind of their flagship is probably the ERJ-145. They also have a few of the ERJ-135s as well, uh, which are just shorter versions of the ERJ-145. Uh, they have 13 of the ERJ-145 in their fleet, and they have three of the ERJ-135s. Now those aircraft will kind of operate their high demand flights, um, and also kind of their longer flights as well. Now I say long, those would be about an hour long from essentially the south of the UK to the north of the UK. I would say from England to Scotland, but that isn't always the case. For example, where I live in Southampton, uh, Southampton gets four destinations uh, from Logan Air, um, including uh, Glasgow, Edinburgh, and Aberdeen, which are all in Scotland. But then they also fly to Newcastle as well. So a Southampton to Newcastle flight is a domestic English flight, which doesn't really make sense, uh, providing they are a Scottish airline. But those flights will be done on board their ERJ 145s and 135s, so those longer flights within the UK. They also have a fleet of very small aircraft as well. They have three Twin Otters and two Britain Norman Islanders. Uh, the Twin Otters are famous for landing on the beach at Barra. They operate a flight between Glasgow and Barra. And at Barra, the runway is literally just a beach, so the uh, Twin Otters land on the beach there, which is pretty cool. And the Britain Norman Islanders are also pretty famous in the Logan Air fleet for actually operating the shortest flight in the world. Yes, it is a Logan Air that operate the shortest flight in the world between Westray and Papa Westray, which are two islands up in Scotland. And then we come to their Saab 340 fleet, which are kind of in between their uh, ERJ 145s and their Britain Norman Islanders and Twin Otters. These will operate flights between places like Sumbra, Kirkwall, and Aberdeen. So those are airports that are large in the sense that they have asphalt runways and they have, you know, the proper facilities and all that, but they're not exactly Glasgow and Edinburgh, which get wide bodies into there all the time. They currently operate a fleet of nine passenger Saab 340s and then a further three cargo Saab 340s. And these are very soon going to be replaced by the ATR 42 and 72. Logan Air have orders for nine ATR 42s and nine ATR 72s, uh, which are of course going to completely replace these old aging Saab 340s. But as I say, because Gemini Jets now has the Logan Air branding, and now that they are licensed to make Logan Air models, I am really hoping that we do see some Logan Air ATR 42 and 72s, as well as some Logan Air ERJ 145s and 135s. But apart from that, let's go ahead and unbox this model. And here we go, we have the very tiny Logan Air Saab 340. Now I think you can see the problem with this model and why people have been so outraged with Gemini Jets about this, but the front landing gear here is not proportional to the Saab 340 at all. It's a shame because the fuselage is really well done. It's a shame about these uh, kind of bent uh, props there, but they can kind of be bent back into place. Um, but it's mainly just the landing gear that people have a gripe with, especially as we've just unboxed three aircraft that have perfect regional landing gear. For example, if I bring in the American American Eagle uh, CRJ 700 here. Now if Gemini Jets put the landing gear that is on this CRJ 700 in the E175s and the CRJ 200s in the ERJ 145s, if they put the landing gear that is on all of those models onto the Saab 340, that would be perfect. But for some reason, a model smaller than the CRJ 700, the E175, they've gone with a larger landing gear. I don't know where they've got this from, but this landing gear looks like it's from a 737 or an A320. It's just not the correct scale for this model, and it looks goofy. 
But I mean, apart from that, we have of course the Logan Air titles up here, uh, Scotland's airline, the props here with the landing gear, and then we have of course the tail with that Scottish tartan pattern and the registration. Um, apart from the landing gear, it's an okay model. I mean, the, the uh, props are bent, but again, that can be fixed. It's just the landing gear <laughs> that people have an issue with. If you took this off and put the landing gear of a CLJ700 on here, it would be absolutely perfect. But for some reason, uh, Gemma Jets decided to do this. And last but not least, moving on to our final model of today's unboxing, we have the Delaware Air National Guard C-130H. Now, the US Air Force have 190 C-130Hs in their fleet, along with 144 uh, C-130Js, which are the newer variants of the C-130. Uh, but this one, I didn't really get this for any particular reason, apart from the fact I just wanted a gray C-130 in my collection. I didn't really care whether it was a C, um, I mean a H or a J. Um, so yeah, I just kind of got a gray C-130. And yeah, here we have the Delaware Air National Guard C-130. Starting off at the front here, we have the cockpit windows, uh, US Air Force, uh, the boarding door there. We have the forward landing gear, uh, the props in all, you know, working order. Um, along there, we have the wing, of course, with the US uh, Air Force or the US military uh, logo on there. Then back here, we have again the uh, US military logo, uh, the rear uh, passenger door, I guess you could call that. And then back here, of course, we have the uh, main cargo door. Uh, then we have the tail of the C-130 with the Delaware Air National Guard band along there and of course the US flag. I would go over this aircraft in more detail but honestly there's not a lot to it. It's a really cool looking C-130 in grey. And apart from that, that does conclude today's unboxing. Uh, overall, it's been a really, really good one. Um, the only negatives, of course, come with the landing gear on certain models. Uh, the Breeze A220 could have been done a little bit better, but in comparison to the Logan Air landing gear, uh, the Breeze one is totally fine. Uh, the Logan Air landing gear is awful. Um, I'm questioning about either selling this or kind of getting some other landing gear that I can put on the aircraft. Um, I don't really need the Logan Air Sub 340, I just kind of got it because I was excited about seeing a UK regional model. Um, I'm more after the Logan Air ERJ145 because I would love to do uh, some sort of Southampton Airport update. So if Gemini Jets release a Logan Air ERJ145, I'll probably get about three or four of those. But apart from that, all these other models have been amazing. A C-130, absolutely great. The American CRJ 700s are amazing. And the Alaska E-175 is also great. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I hope you did enjoy today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.